All right, so this is my aquaponic system. It is the first one I've ever done. Um, it was fun. It was a challenge. Um, mostly <laughs> cutting the barrel in half, uh, getting the barrel to set right in the frame, uh, and uh, getting it all plumbed correctly and getting the pump working correctly. Um, say the most challenging part has been balancing the outflow with the outflow or the inflow on the uh, ball valve with the outflow from the bell siphon. Um, it's something that you kind of just have to play with depending on the size of your tank, the, uh, the gallons per minute or hour of your pump, um, how many head. Um, head is uh, the distance that the water has to travel up to its uh, outflow point um, and uh, the size of your grow bed. Um, I've been playing with it for about a week now just balancing it out um, I finally filled the bed up today with uh, the lava rock, the medium, um, and everything seems to be working perfectly. It's cycled about 20 times, 20, 30 times since I finished it this morning, and um, everything's looking good. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so basically what I did is I took a 55-gallon drum, uh, and I cut it in half lengthwise. The approximate dimensions of the drum were 37 high and 23 uh, wide as far as the... Uh, uh, the diameter of the barrel. Um, so each section is approximately 37 long by 11 and a half deep. Um, it's very important when you, if you use this type of barrel, um, when you cut it in half, you make sure that you do not cut through the bung. Okay? Don't cut through that. Uh, if you do cut through that, you just ruin the barrel. Make sure you have at least one bung. Um, if there are two on the bottom of each side of the barrel, um, you can use this as a secondary drain if if uh, if you need to. Um, let's see what else. Um, the frame itself is uh, approximately 26 left to right. Um, the way we're looking at it now, 37 um, front to back and 40 high. Um, it's basically just two by fours. Once I finish uh, transplanting and making sure that everything is working correctly, I will um, uh, cover the outside with uh, either cedar or redwood or something so it looks nice and so my wife doesn't yell at me for putting another crappy thing in the backyard. Um, the pump, basically it's a uh, <clears throat> it's a Lang 3400 one 20th of a horse RPM uh, fluid pump. Um, I got it from work. A lot of people might not have access to something like this for free. Um, you can buy one. They, depending on the style you get, these go for anywhere from $120 to $180. Um, you can start off with something as simple as a $30 uh, submersible aquarium pump from Walmart. Um, it's up to you entirely within your budget. Um, I use all three quarter inch PVC. Some places I've reduced it to restrict the flow. Um, or I have, uh, this used to be a carbon bed filter, but I've since changed it out for just a uh, straight cloth and medium filter. All it needs to do is just filter out some of the, the solids before they enter the actual uh, impeller housing for the pump. Um, as you can see, the water is kind of dirty because I uh, put the new lava rock in this morning. This will filter out in probably about six or seven more hours. It'll be almost crystal clear um, by the time I get up tomorrow morning. But as you can see, the water here is crystal clear. So it's being filtered. It just has to turn it several times. Um, I'd say the most challenging part of this was um, not just cutting the barrel in half and figuring out how to do that correctly, but if the barrel has been used um, and reused and used and reused, it's not going to be a perfect cylinder. It's going to be kind of cocked a little bit. So you have to take that into account when you go to put it into your frame. Um, once you put water and, and rock and medium in it, everything will sort of level out. So don't be, don't be freaked out if uh, when you get it all framed out and squared up and then you set it on the ground and it's empty and one of the legs is not touching the ground. That'll all balance out. I had the same problem. Um, the second most challenging part was balancing the inflow from the pump with the outflow of the bell siphon. Um, 
because I'm using such a, I guess, a high-powered pump, um, it's restricted a good amount right now. It's probably cut down to a third of its uh, max output. Um, but because I'm using such a high output pump, I had to put a ball valve in here to restrict the inflow because my outflow is only a half inch. So the tank would fill up and stay full at max inflow and it wouldn't drain fast enough. <clears throat> so that's something that I've been playing with for about a week off and on. Um, it's been a challenge, but it's also been fun at the same time. Um, my outflow is simply a bulkhead fitting with a half inch OD or ID, I should say, um, to a half inch T, um, another half inch, a 12 inch half inch nipple uh, that I cut in half, and then you can't see it right now, and I'm not going to hang my camera over the water, but underneath, the, on the underside of the pipe, there are holes drilled, six per side, uh, and once the water starts draining out, it pours into the tank and aerates the water, and it it cycles about, I'd say three, nah, I'd say four to five times an hour, maybe even six. Um, I haven't really clocked it this morning since I uh, put the rock in, um, but it does it several times an hour, which is great because you want to turn your tank at least three times an hour so that any ammonia that you have is being moved through your filter medium into your lava rock where your, um, your bacteria growth is going to break it down into uh, uh, nitrates or um, nitrogen fish or plant food uh, like I said this is my first one this is the first video I've made of it um, it looks kind of rough right now but uh, like I said I promised my wife that I would frame it out that I would uh, trim it with uh, something nice and stain it so it looked nice uh, I transplanted the eggplant yesterday as well as the okra um, they seem to be doing fine still I just transplanted this strawberry this morning and this melon this morning as well there are several fish in there right now. There's probably uh, 13 or 14 fish, uh, some small goldfish, and then some other ones, um, some edible kind. I'm not going to tell you which, though. Uh, let's see. Everything seems to be working good. The bell siphon is, uh, is essentially a 2-inch uh, piece of ABS with a cap on it. Um, I have a 1-inch uh, piece of... Um, PVC reduced down to a half inch. The one inch PVC is approximately nine inches. The bell siphon is approximately nine inches as well. Um, you want to have your the overall length of your uh, PVC bell or your ABS bell, whatever you make it out of, about the same as the length of your um, inner nipple, the nipple that the water actually is going to flow out through. Uh, the reason being is you're going to have about a half to three quarters of an inch difference from the top of your three quarter inch pipe to the actual crown of your cap because it's it's a dome essentially. Uh, that will allow your uh, your siphon to build up enough suction so it works properly. Um, I put in about, I filled it up to about you know, 9 or 10 inches or so of rock. That way the, uh, the water line stays just below the uh, top surface of the rock because you don't actually want the stem of the plants to be submerged in water because that's going to cause them to rot. That's why you don't water uh, a regular soil garden every single day unless it's like 180,000 degrees. Um, you want the, the root zone to be wet, but you want it to be continuously cycling uh, with fresh water. As you can see, it's draining now and it's good. Plenty of aeration. Uh, the fish seem to be happy. The only fish that I've lost were uh, in the first two or three days, which you know, you buy goldfish and you put them in your tank at home and that's, you, you buy 30 of them because you know you're going to lose 15 in the first day. It's what it is. Um, but other than that, they seem to be happy. Um, I even caught a frog at work and threw it in here, but I don't know what happened to him. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's been uh, fun. It's been simple. Hopefully it's everything uh, everybody claims it to be. And I've already have plans for uh, if this does pan out that uh, this fall when I rip the soil garden out. Um, 
I will build an even bigger aquaponics system over there. But uh, I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thanks. So this is my aquaponics system. Uh, down below I have a fish tank and one uh, large fish uh, down here. He's a, kind of a sucker fish uh, that cleans the tank. Uh, I also have a couple of small tetras. Uh, three small tetras, two kind of ghost fish. I don't know if you can see them uh, in the tank. And then inside this uh, piece of wood there's actually three loaches, uh, clown loaches, so the yellow ones with the white stripes. Uh, up above uh, is where my plants are growing and right now I'm just growing mint uh, so that's the only thing I'm growing. I found that I did grow some lettuce uh, and I was actually growing a tomato plant uh, but because I only have one light source on top uh, when the when the tomato plant started growing too high uh, the ones down below wasn't weren't getting enough light so I found that I, I would only grow you know one type of plant at a time uh, so right now I'm doing mint uh, and you can see it's growing. I've already cut a lot of them because uh, they've grown too big. <laughs> so it's kind of nice and it's taken over the whole, the whole system. This actually started from one plant. Um, the starting plant is over here, down there. Uh, then it kind of expanded. Uh, and since then I've actually taken some snipping or clips uh, and I've actually replanted them as well. So there's one back here that I've replanted uh, and it's doing really well as well. Now the way this system works is it is an ebb and flow system, so from my uh, tank I have a pump down here so it sucks up the water, that water goes down uh, into a canister, so that comes down at the base there is a canister which then pumps the water back up um, into my uh, system where I'm growing my mint, uh, and in here it's just a, it's just a bucket uh, with some rocks in it. Uh, so these are just the pebbles. Um, and what happens is it fills up with water. Once the water reaches a certain height, um, it starts flowing down this tube uh, in the tube back into the tank. Uh, and so it does fill up. Uh, you can see the water's rising right now. And it will reach a certain tire, or point. If I open this up in here. Uh, it's actually a bell siphon that I'm using. So what happens, I'll just pull this off. What happens is it reaches a certain height and then the water starts flowing down the tube. Once it starts flowing down the tube, uh, it creates a siphon and once it creates that siphon, it won't let up on that siphon until it reaches the bottom. So that's, on here there's some holes at the bottom and that will release some air into the siphon and once the air is released into the siphon, uh, the siphon stops. So right now you can see the water is actually up at the top of the rocks. And I'll just put the bell back on. And once that's backed on, it should actually start the siphon as well. So you can see here the water's starting to flow. In fact, now I've... Let me just see if it kick-started it. Kick-starts it. I have to give it. So here you can see the siphon has started uh, and it's going down. Now we'll do this automatically uh, and if I go in the back here you can see it's just pushing into the uh, back into the tank down below down below and the other thing that this is beneficial to to the the tank it does push out the bubbles as well so it kind of aerates the water I do have kind of a little bubbler uh, over on the side as well and so the water's draining well, I'll record one whole cycle here now a couple of things that I, I noticed with the bell siphon at least uh, is I did start to put little holes at the top so here I put a little air hole because um, I found sometimes it wasn't releasing this the siphon and the other thing down here is I found it was it was really good to put this elbow in because uh, that kind of kick starts the siphon as well so if it's just a straight tube going down 
uh, sometimes I found that the siphon didn't start up. So it did stop, so you can see here there's no water going through, um, and so that means that the water is actually filling up in the bucket. I don't know if you can see that line of water that's slowly going up, and then once it reaches a certain height, I'll go down here to the tube, You can start. You can see a little bit of water starting to go at this point. And then it starts getting a little bit faster. And then eventually it will kick in uh, and it will just start sucking all the water out. So here it goes, and now it's going to take all the water. And so now if I looked at the water level, you'll start to see the water level drop slowly, and then at some point it will stop. Uh, once it reaches a certain level, the air is going to get into that bell. Once that air gets into the bell, it will stop the siphon. And that's how my system works. Okay, so here's just a quick rundown of the first IBC slash swimming pool aquaponics setup that I've made. Um, I just finished most of this yesterday, and so it's not quite cleared up yet from uh, having a little bit of stagnant water, but basically, here's the IBC with the top cut off of it. Um, actually, technically, this is the bottom because the top is going to be the garden bed that goes on top of it. On top, eventually, uh, here's some plumbing. Basically, this part right here is the drain, and then this part right here is the filler. And these are just some PVC that I put on here to keep from cutting myself on these sharp edges. Um, so this drain goes down and then goes underneath these swimming pools that I have made for garden beds. And they're all connected um, by one pipe. So this drain in the middle of this garden bed and this drain in the middle of this garden bed, those are two bell siphons. And then this one just kind of free flows down through that same pipe. Because I don't have a lot of water pressure right now with the pump that I have, uh, this water going down this pipe helps create enough volume going through that when these fill up, eventually the bell siphons will activate. And then they all drain out into kind of a sump of sorts over here, which is kind of a funny story, but I'll get into it another time. But that's about it. Um, not a lot to see fish-wise because the water is so murky right now. But in a couple days it'll clear up, I think. And hopefully we'll have something to show you in there. There's just a little bit of duckweed on here right now that was kind of left from when I had this just sitting with water in it. But uh, if you notice this little pool over here off to the side, this is just extra water I have on standby in case... I have to add water to the system. I don't want to use just fresh water from the hose because it's too chlorinated for the fish. And then this one is another reserve that I have also holding water in case I need to add some to the system. Um, eventually this will get on top of here and be planted with plants as well. But uh, I haven't figured out how to do that just yet. I think this nice herky piece of plywood is going to go on top and provide the support that I need because that thing is heavy uh, probably a couple hundred pounds with water and gravel in it so that's where I'm at thanks for watching 
Okay, I'd like to demonstrate here what we've done with our aquaponics system in using minnow, the minnows or mosquito fish, Gambusia offense. This entire aquaponics system has turned into a mosquito eating system. So if I move these little flats, this is Oriental Greens right here. I'm going to move them out of the way so you can see what's underneath. And what's under here, lettuce, is a whole bunch of mosquito fish. Now these mosquito fish eat all the, mal the malaria carrying, dengue carrying, West Nile carrying mosquito larvae. This has turned this entire system into a mosquito trap. We have no mosquitoes on our seven acre property. Even though we are in the middle of a very, very high mosquito area, our neighbors also have no mosquitoes on their property. The mosquitoes come here to lay their eggs. There's lots and lots of water, which looks like an ideal place to lay eggs to mosquitoes. But instead of the larva hatching and living in this still water, this still fresh water, the larvae are eaten by mosquito fish. That is what has turned this entire system into a giant mosquito trap. Good evening. This is Chaplain Ian Perry from the Missions of Love. We are starting a school of aquaponics. This part that we're showing today is how to make a biofilter. A biofilter is very important in an aquaponics system if you're going to have a lot of fish in your system. Normally on a continuous flow you would not need a biofilter because you have a set amount of fish and the system cleans itself. But if you're going to have a large amount of fish versus a large amount of plants, it's good to have a biofilter to get some of the concentrated uh, stuff that's in the water out. But it can be very expensive if you buy one. And we're going to show you how to make one inexpensively. Typically a biofilter can cost upwards of several hundred dollars or even more. We're going to show you how to make it for only eight dollars. And that's here in St. Cloud, Florida. The crisis will be dependent upon where you're from. But let me show you what you're going to need. First thing you're going to need is media material. We're using screen material like you would find in your windows of your house. You can use plastic. You could buy a whole bunch of plastics and use it, sponges or anything. But for today, for simplicity and cost purposes, we're only going to use some screen material. You're going to need scissors. You're going to need a kitchen faucet sprayer holder. This is what you would find in the sink. You would have your sprayer would be in there and you would spray your dishes and put it in here. It's very inexpensive. You only need two of them. So we got two. You need a screwdriver. Eight, excuse me, ten sheet metal screws. Any size will do. Just don't get the smallest. You don't need the largest. I recommend getting galvanized because you don't want them to rust. Also, you're going to need an air pump. You can get an air pump at any uh, plant store, pet food store, Walmart. Find a used one. You can probably find one in Craigslist or somewhere. Of course, what comes with the, the, the thing is the air stone. I'll explain why you need that. And then you have here a just a typical tub. This is an 18-gallon tub. They do sell them at 10 gallons. Uh, they cost about the same, which is about five to six dollars for this tub. This is the actual filter. Last two things you're going to need is uh, got this. This holds two-liter bottles. Got this free. Uh, you get it from your public. Just get a, ask them for a holder or go near the trash bin if they're throwing one away. You get that. This here is a filter for an air conditioner. We're just going to put a second filter there for the media. You don't really need it, but we're just going to do that. And this is very inexpensive. Water flows through it. If you do use anything, make sure it's free of chemicals. It's imperative because you will kill the fish. This is all you need to have a, a biofilter. Now I'm going to go here and explain how to make it from step by step. And I'm going to make it in front of you. I'm just not going to show you one and it's running and then you're going to have to decide yourself how to make it. The first thing we do here is we know that we're going to have to screw down the top so I'm going to put that aside for later. First thing I'm going to do is if you look here I've got two holes that I already pre-drilled. Um, when you find the device, whatever, whatever you use to go through the holes, it should look like this. So you have to take it through here. It has a clamp on the other side as you can see here, it gets closer and the, the plastic is between and it closes it and clamps it here so no water will get through. If you want to 
put a little bit extra sealant, you can put some silicone in there, but it's not really necessary. When I was in Haiti, they didn't use, sometimes use things like this. So you're going to have to improvise to do it the cheapest way you can. Now what I did here is I drilled two holes. I placed that in. What's going to happen is, actually I'm going to do it this way. As you notice, I put this here. I put it here. What I'm going to have here is from the aqua system, the water is going to go in here on the bottom. I want it to go to the bottom. And as it goes, it's going to, the water is going to be forced through the media material to filter it, and it's going to come out here, and I'll put this one in. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long to build this whole device. In fact, when I use it, the very first time I use it, I'm going to try not to use any silicone or anything of any kind, because we're trying to show you how to use it quickly and easily. Now, next step, very important. We're going to take the air filter that we need. You get a st what I did here is I just pre-punched a hole here. If you can see, there's a little hole, just big enough for the hose to go through. But it's above the water line here. I don't want it below. I want it above it's because I don't want any water to drip out for any going out of there. So it, there, I got it in. Now what I'm going to do here, it's very important. I put the stone in there, very technical here as you can see. I place it in the bottom just like that. Now, I have it just laying there on the bottom. This is where this comes into place. Uh, this is, I put it upside down. See, the air hose is going to be underneath it. If I put the air hose here and the media sits on top of it, it's not going to let it work right. The bacteria needs to grow and it needs oxygen. That's the reason you're using the air hose. Now you can get a cheaper, inexpensive air hose. As you notice, I just, I just placed it at the very bottom. That's what it looks like. This is almost completely done. The air hose gives oxygen to the system so the bacteria will grow and everything, and so the biofilter works as a biofilter should. Now, as the water comes in the bottom, I'm going to show you how I made this. I took some screen and I cut it like this. There's no set length. It's how much you want it. And I'm going to make it into a knot. Just a little knot like this. You don't want it drum tight like that because you want all the surface area you have to be visible. So let's undo this one. I made it a little too tight to show you. When you do it, just do it nice and loose. And then you fill it in. And you fill it too pretty close to the top. I pre-made these so we don't have to sit here and do that. Let me show you. As I fill it in, this is so simple. You just put it in here. You can push it down a little bit. There we are. And I will show you what it looks like when it's full. As you notice, this is what it looks like. Very simple. Now, if you want to use the green scrubby pad that I showed you, um, I would put this like this. Okay, water can still flow through it. As you notice, make sure this is not occluded or closed like that. You want it underneath it. So what I did here, to make it simple, it breathes so it's like a two-stage filter. Notice it's like that. No chemicals. Water is going to be forced through it come to the top. Now, notice this hose here hooks to the um, water pump. Now, I do recommend this. When you do make this, make this in such a way that you can, doesn't use a lot of power. And the thing that I do recommend is solar energy. You can, this whole system here uses very few watts. You can use a solar cell so, you're not using any electricity wherever in the world you may be. Next, the top. I put the top on, but as you notice, the water is going to go in here and come out here. If I don't secure the top, what's the first thing that's going to happen when I fill it with water? It's going to pop up, water is going to be everywhere. So what we did, we took the screws, like this. We have a hex screwdriver. You can use a regular screwdriver, you know, whatever size screw. I do recommend 
a screw about this size here. Um, the package says this was a, uh, a number 10 5x8 screw. Just You don't have to stick to a, a certain number of screw. I do recommend putting, as you see right here, I'm just going to do this. You just put in a hole. If you look closely, we put a screw here beside the uh, handles, right here. And I give these other two here. Now, if for some reason the hole will get messed up because it is a sheet screw, you can definitely put it in front of you when you do it. Um, you can make the holes in a different spot if you need to, so you don't have to go buy another container and start all over. There we are. Then, put this screw in here. Now you don't need a drill. The reason we're doing it like this, simplicity is critically important. If you were to be in a place such as where there's a tornado, a disaster happen, you can't afford to buy a lot of things. Or you're in an area you just don't have the money. So I recommend <coughs> using this. Now what's the great thing about this, you can clean it easily by taking the screws out. And of course you would use the water on any plants that you have to fertilize them in the house, flowers, or whatever. It's good. It's not like a hydroponic system where the water you're getting rid of it is now what they call a, um, how would you say, it's not a, uh, it's not a, it's thing EPA needs to check it because it's bad for the ground because it's got a lot of chemicals and stuff in it. This is purely natural because we're using the aquaponic system. And you will be seeing that we're going to be teaching you a two-step system that you can use this. Simplicity. Again, <clears throat> we're showing you because we want you to know that it's a free thing that we're showing you to do, step by step. You can modify this, make it better, worse. This is just simple. Um, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money because if you don't have it, you can't. And this is how it works. This is a complete system. This is all it is for a biofitter. Eight dollars and you have it. Now I look forward to seeing you. If you have any other questions, feel free to call or uh, write me at ki4ngz yahoo.com. You can look at our, uh, uh, our YouTube site. We have a lot of pictures and questions. Feel free to email me or leave a comment and we'll help you in any way we can. This is uh, Missions of Love School of Aquaponics and may you have a good time growing something.